Where are we? Do we globalize so much that we eat more fast food than our own food, wear more fashion from outside than our own, that sometimes we think that if we don't do that, we won't be with the most modern of the world. But I bet you today, our very, very great guest for the first session for today, Morinosuke Kawagachi, will tell us different because he appreciates the manga and the animes of Japan. And he will tell us that not just the tangible of money funding technology, but the subculture, the microculture, will help spur innovation even greater. So please, ladies and gentlemen, a warm, warm round of applause for Marino Suke. Okay, thank you for coming. I came from Japan, and as I was mentioned, I'm going to talk about the innovation and the subculture. So, do, do I begin now? Yes, you can begin <laughs> straight away. Or oh, whatever, we, do, do we talk <laughs> now? <laughs> so, because you said you have 45 minutes of All right, okay, then begin. <laughs> so, innovation is an uh, essential and a critically, you know, important keyword for Malaysia. Not only Malaysia, for everybody. But uh, and also this uh, event is the made for the innovation. But uh, innovation itself is not a purpose. Innovation is for some other purpose. It is simply the value, creative value. We have to find out creative value. If you are the politician, if you are the, you, you are the merchandiser, or the principal, it doesn't matter. You have to find out the value for the student or the citizen, or for the, for the customer. So the value is essentially important. And the innovation is a means for the finding the new value, right? So I am going to talk about the big trend of the value is shifting. And then later on, you will know how important your subculture is, OK? So let's begin with this right. So let's begin with this uh, Japanese heroic product, which was innovative before. You know, look at this uh, Sony's Walkman, or the Nikon's camera, or Civic CVCC, the, the reinborn engine of the Honda. All those heroes made a lot of money for the Japan, and also gave us a lot of pride. You know, we can make it. But look at carefully, these guys are all kind of Old, old guys, right? Now Samsung is coming and the blah, blah, blah is coming, so we are caught up. And then if I describe it with a number, like a consultant, this will be the good motif, DRAM. This is the world share of the Japanese dynamic random access memory, which is essential component for the, any IT gadget like a smartphone. Once upon a time, we conquered the world, but we shrunk a lot. You know, we thought we beat up America, but we are beaten up Korea. And Korea will be replaced by the another challengers, such as Malaysia. That is the inevitable life cycle of the product. And then later on, more scary curve is coming. Look at those. DVD player or whatever. You know, all those digital equipment. Japanese lost. That was scary. That, that happened at the end of the last century. It was so scary for the Japan. All the Japanese people got sweat a lot. Oh my God, what's going to happen? We're going to be the poor again? And then after all, what happened is we used to be called Japan as number one. But now it's setting sun. <laughs> it's so sad, right? And after all, this Japanese big corporation's presence in whatever the Fortune 500 or whatever, is deteriorating. Instead, these BRICS countries or emerging countries are replacing our role. That was scary. And on top of it, Japanese people are physically aging. Look at this, uh, another scary line. This is uh, Japan. And then the axe so shows this is a uh, labor workforce percentage, you know, from 15 age to 
to the 64, which can work. Percentage peaked out at the 1990s and sharply cascading down. That is the first, I mean, we are the top runner of the aging in the whole world. This is the first experience of the human being for the whole history. What's going to happen to the quickly aging society? So we are, in the sense, in the fr frontier. You know, European countries, America, they gradually grow up, grow up, so they are gradually aging. But we got all of a sudden rich, so that trade off is we are losing so quickly. And after followers like uh, Korea, China, Russia, it's already peaked out like a couple of years ago, like uh, this yellow line. And then so called after BRICS is the next 11 or visit, you know, based our MENA, those countries, including Malaysia, is coming. But inevitable, you know, this life cycle you got to face soon in the next generation. So what's going to happen to you guys are all happened in Japan. And we are, as a exp you know, first experienced first people, we are facing to the difficult problems. So it's like a time machine for you guys. What's going to happen to you guys are already happening here. So it's such a good uh, benchmarking market and people's mentality. And instead, as you often see this, this is the GDP share of the world. After the Lehman shock, you know, this whole emerging countries this was ignited. So in, in like 20 years, half of the asset will be produced from the emerging market. That was, you know, imaginable, not imaginable thing. Only just 10 years ago, it was not imaginable, but totally different world is coming. So this summit, beginning from this G, actually six, and then for the kind of decades, we, they kept it for like that structure, but after Lehman, it became 13, and now it's already 22. So it's like a UN. It's already shared with the epicenter. It's coming from west to east, and then coming from north to south. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> oh, okay. So the population. So what's the population? You know, since you are becoming rich, so you multiple. And then the world is becoming full. It's a 10 billion people. So it's going to be the island. No wonder people are talking about the sustainability. We are full. And then point is, the population is coming into the city. This shows the, you know, po you know, the population of the, the, the ratio of the population in the urban area. This red line shows the world, you know, the standard. It used to be only the one third of the people were living in the city. Now it's already more than half of the people. And it's quickly going to the two thirds of the people are living in the city. They are flooding into the city, and 95% of the increase of the population will happen in the city, no matter where you live. The countryside is shrinking. That, why? That's because this robot, robotics is coming. The, in the farmland, all the machines are working, so we don't need a human. In, even in the factory, it's turnkey. It's robotics are replacing human. So if you are the winner of the world, it means less people are working because it's much more efficient. So the winner means less people. So no, we have nothing to do in the farmland. We have nothing to do in, do the, in the factory. So they are coming into the city and they're doing the what? It's a service industry, actually. Even Tokyo, you know, Japanese are shrinking, but still Tokyo is still increasing. So that much, you know, in 30 years, as I mentioned, in, in Japan, 98% of the people are living in the city, like Hong Kong or Singapore now. It's a big island, but it's going to be like a big Singapore. And here is a chart. It shows the horizontal way shows the urbanized rate, just as I mentioned. And then the axis of the Z, Z axis, the, 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 the axis shows the service industry's portion. So it's proportional. From China level to the Hong Kong level, it's very much proportional. If you are living in the city, it means you're serving, working for the service industry. Nothing else to do, right? So you have to face, have the interface to the people and do something, sell something, or do some something. And here is a you know, comparison of the you know, countries. Ten big population countries, three industries, service industry, manufacturing, and agriculture. 
This is the example of the America. Already 70% of the people are working in the service industry. Now let's say this is America like this, and then here is the Germany. You know, this black portion is a manufacturing, you know, high-tech factories. It looks like, you know, it's big. Compared to Japan, Japan is this. Compared to Germany and the, the America, it's uh, much more shallow, right? Japan, I ex introduced Japan as a high-tech country, but, you know, since the war ended, we became the high-tech high country. So it's actually much shallower than Germany or the United States. The point is, follower like India, or Indonesia, or Malaysia for sure, Russia, you know, once they graduate from the agriculture, you know, passing through the in, you know, engineering, directly going to the service industry. Why? That's why I mentioned, because you know, it's all automatic. So the service industry time is coming. So in Japanese, you know, the, the business players are now flooding out to the emerging market, especially Southeast Asia. Instead of exporting the automobile, or the you know, IT gadget, those guys, you must have seen it in Kuala Lumpur. I've seen some of them. Kumon uh, education system or the Takube in the package delivery or this 10 minutes haircut service. They, these are all so-called fast business, fast business. Now, instead of exporting high-tech gadget, we are changing the shape of the country. Because, you know, this Southeast Asia is now wealthy enough to appreciate this kind of well thought out service. So for, you, for example, I give you some idea of the product and the service relation. Here is the Zojiroshi, the water server. It's for a hot water server, which can be you know, made by anybody now. But this water server has a wireless transmitter system. For what? You know, this elderly woman, like your grandmother, is living alone in the urban, in the countryside because their daughters and sons are, went into the city already, so elderly people are left over in the countryside. So she is living alone, and then the, and the kids are wondering if she is alive or if she is healthy or not. So every time she uses this water server, this can memorize the pattern of the, you know, the, her lifestyle and then run, running. You know, this is on the track of the regular pace or not. And if it's you know, come across to the threshold of this irregularity, this server is connected to the cloud system of the Dozirushi, and then the Dozirushi computer calculates, uh -oh, something is wrong, could be wrong. Then what happens is call to this, you know, the automatic call is coming to the daughter in the Tokyo. You had better call to the mother. We don't know what happened, but it's something might happen. So this system can be totally done by this camera system, but it's, it's so harassing, right? It's a violation of the privacy, so she doesn't like it. So Zero she found that such a good system, right? It's just that, you know, water server can be such a good system, service already. It's a watching system of the elderly people living around, which is happening in Japan everywhere. So it's called iPod. Other example is, Okay, Yakult ready, you know the Yakult ready, right? Yakult was a sensational liquid 50 years ago. It was good for health, it can, the bacteria goes into that intestine and then it'll make a good flora. So good for the health. But the Yakult, they can copy, you know, a lot of copies appear. So the, actually, Yakult is going into the overall about the world, 26 million bottles a day, it, it, we, de, de, it's delivered. But the point is Yakult ready system. The Yakult Ready system was developed, of course, in Japan, and all the ladies are young mothers. And they provide the job to the young mothers, but you know, they have the children. So they have to you know, worry about the children. So the Yakult prepared such a nursing, good care of the nursing system for the baby, so they can work anytime. Sometimes the baby gets sick, so they have to take, take off, to bring it to the hospital. Then you know, they, you have to replace to the other colleagues. So this replacing system is also very flexible. So it was very well prepared for the young mother to work for. So that system itself was appreciated in the whole world. So the Yakult itself is a hardware product, 
But actually, what happened is the software system of the Yakult Ladies employees. And in Japan, mainland Japan, what happened to the Japanese Yakult Ladies is already multiple, you know, this uh, function, multifunctional worker. She is becoming checking on the lonely lady, an elderly person, just like I mentioned. You know, she opened the door and uh, is she, you know, fine or not? Or she's, you know, the collaborating with the neighborhood the police officer and, you know, just checking around the where the person is walking around, that kind of information this year. So in the mainland Japan, they are improving to the multi robot, and then the Yakult Ready system is you know, going all, the, all over the world. And the similar thing happened in the office of Guriko. Guriko Ready it didn't come to Malaysia yet because it's just born you know, 10 years ago. And this Guriko Ready, instead of the Yakult Ready, she is covering the urban area, visiting her office. And then, you know, she put this, just not a vending machine, just, you know, just a box of the Glico product. And then the, the employee just put the, you know, 100 yen coin, and then, you know, they, they use, you know, they eat, it, eat well, the caramel or the chocolate. The point is, this is not a vending machine, so that she comes every day, every day to refill it, and then she makes a communication to the, you know, the, the workers there, and then she is looking for another business opportunity. So she's actually, not only just a deliverer, she is actually have the se selling sense. She needs to selling and looking for the next job opportunity. So finally, Guriko, you know, discovered the good opportunity of the mask, you know, the pollution protection mask, and then they are going into the non-food, you know, business, going through this Guriko ladies idea. So that's again, Guriko itself is so much easy to copy, but you know, while that, you know, Japanese companies are going into this service. So what's SECOM? SECOM system is a security company, and it goes into the whole over the world, but in, the, in, in motherland Japan, the, these security guys are doing cleaning and the nursing and the cooking and the gardening. They do everything, one package service. So they are, just like Yakult ready, they are arming their skills to multiple robots, multiple function, right? So that's the pattern. Now, Japanese are struggling from the, okay, we lost the, you know, the high tech, you know, the profit. And instead, we gotta go up, go to some kind of service. So and so is the Japanese current balance. This blue part shows the export balance, trade balance. Finally, it becomes deficit. That's because here is the global stock market, you know, Russia, Brazil, India, blah, blah, blah. These bricks ignited, as I mentioned, after 2000 especially after the Lehman, while the advanced countries are staying low, they are boosting up. And then, on the contrary, Japan lost the, you know, the competitiveness for the trade. Instead, what's coming up is the service industry has been long time the deficit, but now it's becoming profit. And also this uh, income balance. Income balance is, uh, means like all those you know, service uh, co companies overseas, they get the profit and send to the headquarters in Japan. Such as this uh, Benesse or the Muji. In the overseas business is increasing. Just a con very much contrast of this digital equipment, okay? So first, topic summar summary. I was talking about this, what happened to the high-tech, our heroic products. On the contrary, the service is coming no matter where you live. It's not only Japan. And then what happened to Japan is the Japanese shape of the industry is quickly changing. We have to, you know, metamorphose it to the different person because we are caught up by, you know, other countries. And go back to that digital equipment again a little bit. Here is the unit price of the liquid crystal display. It sharply goes down as time goes by so that we produce, release the next product. Next model goes down, <laughs> next model, so it's a hair. It's going, you know, once you release the new products on the market, it goes down, cascading down. So as flash memory, CPU, the hard disk drive, everything same. So you gotta keep releasing new products. It's a zigzag war. It's really so-called the red ocean. You gotta win. Otherwise, competitors do the, you know, short turnaround. And on the contrary, this is a different picture of the price. Price of the second-hand market. Okay, here is, let's say, 2008, new model appear. And then what happened in the second-hand market is 
Look at this king is Aramis Barkin and Kerry and the Rolex Submariner. No matter how long it ta it, in the time goes by, let's say 10 years later, it's still 80% of the initial price they can keep. That's the brand power, which Japan wanted to have a lot. So Grand Seiko, it's the highest model of the Seiko, it's very much precise. But still, one year it's less than 50% of the price. It's so miserable. It's, it's just a normal Seiko, it's in one year it's less than 10%. It's nothing happened, but it's just one year, then it's less than 10%. It's so sad, right? I'm very much sure this Grand Seiko is as precise as this Rolex, but Rolex can do that. That's the winner of the brand war. So let's see the car. This Grand Majesta is one of the highest, you know, high line of this uh, Toyota's car. And usually in three years, it becomes the less than half price. So I call it less than half price time, half life, Half-life of the price time. So it depends on the, each car, the category of the car, it's different, you know, this life. So it becomes half, that's called, I call it half-life of the price. The conclusion is this. Half-life is elongated in the purely functional car like a truck, or the purely emotional car like a, you know, the Mini, especially Mini convertible. So, you people think this Toyota Majesta was even more expensive than Bentley. This kind of luxury car can keep the you know, good brand, you know, the, the life for a long time, just like I mentioned, Barkin keeps the wrong price. But in the case of car, actually what happened is a purely functional car or the purely emotional car. It becomes the, your friend or the partner. So even though it gets a lot of problem, you don't want to throw it away because it's your partner already. So that's the para, the way, hint, to have the you know, long life. So they can keep this car and maintain this car. So maintain business, the service industry again. Not just to sell the product. So once upon a time, the product was loved as a partner before. If it's very much important product like a jewelry or the trophy, it was sitting on the sofa. And it, all those mobile gadgets, like a binocular, they were, when they, you know, take out uh, to the outdoor, they were always wearing the leather jacket. But nowadays, it's all naked. Why? It's considered as an on-demand function. So new model appear, dump. New model appear, buy it, dump it. So that's the, you know, actually, you know, makers are squeezing their necks by themselves, releasing new products, new products. And actually, they, the people don't love the product anymore. Therefore, you have to short, shorter turn around, they have to release that so-called red ocean. And we were trapped in that war, and then we lost. <laughs> okay, so let's see, in that context, Japanese high-tech robot. These are all Japanese robots, the crystal of the high technology. Let's make it a line. Some are Science fiction, some are toys, some are industrial robots. And then on the left hand side, it's the automaton. These are the hero I am talking about today. Automaton is a 200 years ago, Japanese first generation of the robot. Here is the masterpiece of the automaton, Karakuri Ningyo. And this guy can draw the four kanji, the Chinese character, 200 years ago. That was a miracle magic, high tech. Actually designed and manufactured by Hisashige Tanaka, she's the founder of Toshiba. And that was magically, you know, high tech, you know, the, was used for this mechanism. And then Japanese engineers, the, like uh, robot magazines, are still making a special edition about this model. How precisely done, precision of this mechanism. They are so proud of, we are the descendant of this Hisashige Tanaka. And then what they are talking about is a mechanism. Like what kind of module is inside? Like this. You know, this gear system or whatever power transfer system. So they are still talking about how much it was sophisticated. And on the other hand, the artists are also talking about how much well done. You know, this was a real silk and the amber. You know, this belt buckle, belt buckle was, you know, done by that, you know, gold lacquer on the amber. And this 
knife is really actually the hammered sword. sword. So it's not just a, you know, looks like a, the katana sword, but it's actually really had a you know, steel sword. So engineers talk about this mechanism and then artists talk about the, the fascination of the detailed artwork. But actually, what, what, in a sense of the service, the Hisashige's talent was not there. So actually, what Hisashige had the talent is different. Service industry talent. It was proven in the resource of the power. You know, at that time, there was no tiny mura, therefore, you know, only one coil was the source of energy. And then, 12 strings are in the body to manipulate the whole body. It was a puppet, right? But for writing those three, four difficult characters, he used only three strings. Then what happened to the other nine, nine strings is, unbelievably, only for the purpose of this moving neck. So this machine, when it's drawing, start drawing, just not a little bit, and then finish the drawing, look at the spectators, and then not a little bit. I made it, right? So it doesn't have any movement of the eye or mouth or anything. It's frozen like no theater. But for him, that was important, much more important. 75% of the resource was shared into this expressing the emotion. For him, this three, four characters was nothing. So that was his pride. So engineers and artists are talking about how to make it, you know, how precisely they can make it, how nicely they can decorate it. But actually, nowadays, easy to procure the gyro sensor, acceleration sensor, or GPS system, it, they sell it on the street. So what to do? with those, you know, those high technology is the point. And then that is the sense of the theater director. And the Hisashige had both. That's why he was genius. So that's a good hint. You got it, right? The, this is the service industry. What grabbed the heart of the customer or the student or the citizen? Right? So how to do it, you can learn from the so-called advanced countries. It's, we can buy it anywhere. So the sec and then in Japan, as I mentioned, how, what to do? On the contrary of this high-tech gadget disaster, this Japan Expo in Spain and that's Paris, or student, foreign student number, over visitor numbers are increasing because somehow, instead of digital gadget, digital contents are grabbing the people in the abroad. So for example, this is the world all-time bestsellers top 35. You can check in the Google, uh, the Wikipedia. And excluding Bible and Quran because it's uncomfortable. The top, among top 35, six of the Japanese manga, you know, comics are ranked in. This is not a million seller, billion seller. As you probably know, Dragon Ball or the One Piece, all, those are the top two. That, was not done, that could not be done by any other novel writer or all through the history of Japanese. And then, if we, if we only see that the comics world, the subculture indicator of comics, is that, you know, 1920s, 30s, it was a French comics was the seller. And then up to 60s, American comics was uh, occupying the world. After that, all the, every year's big, biggest hit is Japanese, as I mentioned. That's the trade-off. We are losing something, but we are graduating from something and going into something. And then that structure is this. Here is a high culture, subculture, technology, and that all the time, and then now. Okay? So this technology, as I mentioned, it was so sad lines, scary. And instead, digital contents were appreciated. It's such a trade-off. And then the high culture is still occupied by this Gucci, Rolex kind of thing, as I mentioned. They can keep the good brand for a long time. Now challenging Japanese old culture is a kabuki theater or the no theater kind of thing. But it, 200 years ago, this kabuki was uh, considered as a folk culture for the, you know, the people, not for the, you know, the classy people. Classy people was enjoying this no theater. Kabuki or the puppet theater. Now, they survived for 200 years, so they escalated their position. They got a citizenship. So they are not considered a subculture. They are considered a high culture. <coughs> so that, you know, it takes, it, we need a time to be accepted by the elderly people. So that's the pattern, life cycle. 
of this whatever the value itself. We go into this and graduate from this, and then finally the fruit is there. So second topic summary is I was talking about how the value is emotional touch, attachment is important. And also how to make it is not a problem anymore. What to do with it? Curation is the point. And then this is the pattern of the value shifting from there to where. So the last topic today is relating to this, the subculture directory. What you have to find yourself is more important. So here is a typical segmentation of this uh, MBA course. Okay? If it's a segment, full segmentation, it's adult or child, feminine or masculine. <coughs> Let's see stereotype of the woman in the world. Here is the adult woman, elegant woman, Sophia Loren, Monica Bellucci kind of, very elegant. Usually is South European. It's a stereotype, okay? There is no racism. And if it's a more like a, you know, Northern Europe, what's going to happen to this lady, charming lady, is Marina Dietrich or the Greta Garbo. It's a kind of more manly. Now what happens if they are young, boy-like women? It's American, glamorous women. Now what happens is on the left-hand side here. It's Asian in general. Kawaii, cute. You know, it's childish and feminine. So that's Okay, you know, we have the elegant Japanese lady, or powerful Japanese lady, but compared to these, cannot win. <laughs> so as the product, automobile. Just imagine, typical car from France or the Italy is elegant. Or how about the German car or Swedish car? It's a tough car, practically like a tank. American car, it's powerful, you know, 300 horsepower. A Japanese car is this, Civic CVCC and then hybrid car. You know, in the contest of the horsepower or the speed, we can never win against those monsters, but look at this. This is the highest efficient engine in the world, the most mileage. But it doesn't look like this elegant or the, you know, huge car. That shows. And then the, these are the drivers of those cars. It fits, right? Any product is like that, if you look carefully, Vacuum cleaner, too. Elegant machine, tough machine. <laughs> then, you know, huge sound monster machine and the Japanese tiny machine, right? And I was an I was engineer in Hitachi and I was designing the vacuum cleaner. I promise this sucks the most. <laughs> so, you know, the good engine inside, but it doesn't show I'm a monster, right? And it's so silent, too. So was bicycle. The road racer, mountain bike, you know, Americans love this motocross, you know, it's so boyish, right? And the Japanese, I call this Mama Chari. <laughs> and it has an you know, assisting system of the motor. And then we put the two, two boy and girl, whatever child, so that it's stable, it's assisted by the bike. So it's not a power or speed or, you know, you know whatever the juggling. It's just practically and it's so mild. And I'm talking about Japan as a leader of this whatever Asia, but I'm sure we share the same thing in Southeast. <coughs> so not only this product, look at the, this greeting manner. Shaking hand is a global stan you know, the standard protocol, but Japanese are not good at shaking hand. We bow and then you know, keep distance, right? We hesitate a lot. So as other Asians in general, you know, Thai people, why, and then you know, the Indian people, Namasute. And similar thing, can, if, we can, if we can find in the European system, it's a Kotsi. You know, girls in the Harry Potter movie to do it like this, right? It's so cute. It's so much gary. Adult woman like this hand kiss, right? It's so unnatural if the Japanese do this, right? <laughs> the Italian lady hug, it's a big mama. What happened to the guys? Like this, <laughs> right? Look at this, American. I envy them. You know, give me five. You know, the Japanese can never do it naturally. It's so unnatural, like a robot. <laughs> Even drinking way. If you look carefully, 
like that. You know, the point is not only the manner, the hardware design is relating to this manner. Elegant way of drinking is, it's, if it's an English verb, pinching. Pinching and drink. It's so elegant. No matter how big guy, you have to pinch it and then drink it. It's automatically elegant. If it's like this, grass, you know, you've got to grab it, you know, grasp it. So even the elegant lady has to grab it, right? So what happened to Japanese? Sake. Tiny, right? <laughs> little by little, <laughs> right? What happened to American? What do you see? This is the answer. <laughs> Why, right? We don't need a container. Do it. <laughs> even milk, do it. <laughs> right? So that's, that's, you know, I'm not saying which is better or worse. That's ourselves. Identify yourself. That's the body. What to do is in the, our everyday life. But if you know them all, but you never thought about this categorization, right? Even in Southeast and Asia, probably Asia itself is on the left hand side down. But Thailand and then, you know, whatever is different. So you've got to define yourself out of your everyday life. So I was, at the beginning, I started with these four famous cars. But actually, it's old, 1970s model. Well, what happened to all those models now? Well, the newest model of these companies are like this. Well, it still have the flavor of Mercedes, but it's so similar compared to 50 years ago, right? Now what happened to the, you know, according to the whatever chart, it's going to go into the so-called center. Probably this nano, <laughs> whatever, Tata's nano will conquer the world. Because it's a red ocean. Somebody will win, but you will lose something, you know, premium brand. You got to go through something, but you, once you go through something like Japan, you have to find out yourself. Now it's the time to find out because time is compressed. Later, comma, you know, don't have enough time to you know, incubate your own culture because you're too busy to crawl in the Red Ocean War. But now, it's the innovation is the main idea. You're correct. Then you have to find out now. It's a time already now. You have to find out what yourself is. That's the point of my lecture today. So at the third topic, I was talking about the actress or product customer. It doesn't matter. If you look carefully with the, you are some bias or idea, you can find out. And then you, know, you don't go into the red ocean. You, once you go into the red ocean, but after that, what, what, what's going to happen is waiting in the life cycle of the inevitability. So I was talking about today, wrap, wrap it up. First, I was talking about this global service, losing, losing the high-tech gadget. Instead, service industry coming, I was talking. So answer is like a aircraft ready. You remember, right? And the second topic I was talking about, this emotional touch, attachment, is actually long life of the product. So you can go into the maintenance service of the product, not just to sell the product. Then for that, you know, attachment is important. Then the third topic was this, identification yourself. I just come up with the two axes, you know, gender and, uh, and age, but it can be anything. But you've got to find out what you bury yourself. And that is hidden in your subculture, not high culture. High culture is elderly people's accumulation. Subculture's career is a contemporary people, which is you guys now, young people. So the treasure is in the young people's culture. And the elderly people's role is respect them. If they have the future, that's in it. And you have to clarify what's the diamond in it. That's the message for me today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maureen Nosuke. <clears throat> um, I've been a bad moderator because I'm supposed to give a few announcements, but I thought that I'll give it after Maureen Nosuke has presented because a lot of slides. For all of the delegates, please log on to WIFKL 2013 mobile app to view all event info and join in the discussion. I'm now going to open it for the Q&A. I'll go up and speak. Maureen Nosuke, please take a seat sure. at the bar. We don't have that small sake <coughs> cup, but... Uh, Feel free to have that tall glass. I'm going to go to the back to get questions because um, I like to go and get questions from the back. But if there's any question from the front, please raise your hand, yes? You can go straight to the <coughs> mic that's nearest to you. But I'll go and get the next one so that we can get it fast because we have about eight minutes left. 
Please state your name and straight to the question, please. Yes, my name is uh, Dr. Arif Nan from Silterra Corporation. This, um, I'm like the boy who came late and the teacher asked him, Why, how do you make up for coming late? I said, I'll, I'll go back early. So I just came 10 minutes ago, but I got the drift, drift of your style, the kawaii style, the glamorous style, whatever. So one question, the, I would, I'd like to share with you and uh, the rest of the delegates. I've got a very funny hobby. Uh, every time I'm in the car park, I, I was stopped by a guard actually one day because I said, what are you doing here? Because I, look, I walk around and look at the back of the cars and the front of the cars. Then I notice a very interesting thing because the front of the cars, you have the two eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Is that right? So then I, I see the, some cars are very sad. You no, know, the eyes like that, and then the mouth like that. Then yeah. now there's, uh, <coughs> as you said, the, the grabbing thing. Now there's the cars that come with big mouth, you know. I thought starting with this uh, Masur star, you know, the, the big mouth, and everybody copies the big mouth. Mm. And then the, uh, my first, my, one of my cars, uh, the uh, Hyundai Coupe, is like a snake kind of eyes, and very kind of fierce, kind of like Korean style of uh, personality. So has the designers include this kind of emotional touch when they design the car? Because I sometimes say the car is a very nice engineer, but it looks so sad, no? and sometimes it looks very grumpy. Uh, now it's got all oh, the big mouth. No? Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to copy All right. <laughs> you know, the, do you know this fact? You know, if it's uh, less than four years old boy or girl, let them draw the picture of the car. They draw the picture of the car from the front like a face. But once you become adult, it's from the side way, right? You put the two tires on. And then that's that coding, you know, symboliz symbolizing system in the brain. Because mm -hmm. you cannot me memor memorize everything so that you have to downsize the memory of the car in the brain so that you encode the image of the car. It's simply, simply distinguishable thing. But the, the nature says, before the, you know, this, uh, this uh, brain is established in the human way, probably the old people like, you know, like two, two million years ago people, or the monkey or anything, they are looking at the face as a face. So there are lots of study about the face. And then let's say Honda, I give you the example of Honda of the 30 years of the history of the development. They notice that scary face is good for the car, not car, actually for the bike. Once the bike is crashed into the four-wheel car, obviously the two-wheel car will lose, and then they get hurt. So important way to protect by himself is a sharp eye, and then, you know, looking scary face mounted on the bike. Therefore, if you are driving the car, you see the, you know, back mirror, and then the, the two-wheel car is coming from the back then you recognize it much quicker than the mild face. Mm -hmm. You know, because your brain is trained up for the millions of the history, you gotta react to the scary face much quicker. They did a lot of research of the brain. You know, now the MRI can tell millisecond reaction time. There is a, you know, face recognition cell identified by the study of the brain. It, no matter where you live, that particular part of the cell is working for face recognition only. So they are checking the how much the reaction time, and then they show the tester the, a lot of faces of the design of the automobile, and then w which car react the fastest. And then they mount it to the weaker car. You know, if the strong car, like a truck, makes a you know, scary face, that's the strongest in the world. So it's parallelly moved. So they, the big car should be milder face, and then the small car should be the scary face. So that traffic condition will be controlled not using any high technology, but just the design can do that. So, you know, they did it 30 years ago. Somebody, somebody knows, I interviewed him, and he said, same kind of age group, he said, I actually wanted to make a robot, but, you know, I couldn't get the enough budget from the company, Honda. So I looked for the, you know, reasoning to make uh, face research, and then he found that, ah, this is a good way to get the budget from the, you know, security issue, right? So that's uh, one way to you know, use that, you know, face idea. Maureen, it's okay. Well, while we're waiting for the second <laughs> okay, question. sorry. Maybe the car is, is a, a bit high tech, but uh, every morning, even this morning, people around the world have got to go and do their business. 
but doing business was one of your most viral TEDx discussion on YouTube. So can you please explain to us, give a short example before we, we go to the next question of how a simple thing like going to ease yourself in the restroom publicly imbues subculture, especially in Japan, because it, ha it haven't has the element of if you're shy to emit sound from that small office, you still have an innovation to make up for it. So maybe you can go there while I find my victim here because they like to stay behind. In a, you, you mean in a, in a washroom, yes. for example? The high-tech washroom of Japan. Oh, that okay. is a standard for everyone else. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Because in Malaysia, we're still trying to have competition right, right, to right. make clean okay. bathroom. You know, the Japanese high-tech toilets, you know, Jap in Japan, there are three companies are co competing, and each company has more than one thousand of the master's degree engineer researching about the toilet only. That is amazing. No, nowhere else you can find a toilet professor toilet. But in Japan, <laughs> it's a lot. And then if you go and you know, tear down the to Japanese uh, toilet, nine motors are in it. Okay. And then 232, yes. you know, the, 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 the computer in it. So, you know, this, this is most advanced robot in the house. So once you go into, step into the room, it will open automatically because it has a sensor. And then it's already warm up. You know, it's, you know, in the cold season, you know, sitting down is such a, you know, kind of, <laughs> you need to prepare the, your butt. You know, okay, it's, <laughs> right? But it's warm. And it's, it's actually in six seconds it gets warm so that you don't have to waste the energy. You know, it has sensor and they calculate how long it takes you know, open the door to sit down, it was average was six seconds. So that in six seconds, this, you know, infrared system goes up, you know, warm it up so that we don't waste the energy. And also this water, this shower system, you know, if you look carefully with the high speed camera of this shower, it has that 100, you know, bullets in one second is done. It's like an inkjet printer. And then each, you know, every 10 bullets of the water is a big bread, so that you can feel <laughs> like that. So it, it actually, it's better than just to water it, you know, it's, you know, wave is e e easier to make it dirty, you know, dirty press to clean, right? You, you, so you understand, right? So they make it like an inkjet printer. And also the water consumption is amazingly low. It's already 3.9 liter per time. It used to be 20 liter. Only 20 years ago, one flush, 20 liter. And also, one amazing function is uh, making uh, some noise system. Okay, in the office, office toilet, of the especially female toilet, you know, if you pee, you make a sound of the pee, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. So they made uh, some kind of noise system, camouflaging noise. So <laughs> it makes a bigger sound of <laughs> right? So, you know, my sound will be camouflaged by this system. <laughs> So, of course, you can download your own favorite sound, too. Okay. In the interest of time, I'll moderate the question because we have about three minutes left. Okay. Um, I am Ahmad Zaki. I'm a professor at the University of Technical Malaysia Melaka. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, good morning. Ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. Okay. Um, actually, maybe <laughs> first, uh, let me comment on the toilet issue. So, that's what I've known was my head department and also supervisor. And years ago, we had this opportunity to talk about, uh, he, he organized after lunch a kind of a session where we, we do kind of a creativity uh, discussion. So we discussed about what's a good toilet, so if that to remember. So, and finally we came up with a very inno uh, innovative system. And later on, we saw the Japanese came up with the same design. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that's not the work I said. Uh, I, uh, I have gone to Japan since 1985, so uh, to Kyoto University, and of course many, uh, many times after that. Uh, and of course, I saw the culture and also the technology. So I had an opportunity to go to Samsung, yeah. And I was surprised in Samsung, there were many Japanese, American, and Europeans working in Samsung. So my question is actually to you: Okay, is, is the culture or the people involved in the process? Very important. For example, uh, before Korea was not, uh, you know, on top, 
but then they managed to uh, went ahead. Is it because of the people, the culture? Yeah, thank you. Morning, Mr. Kisan. We take one more question, All right. so that we save time. Um, I want a young guy. I want a young guy, Dato. <laughs> because subculture is pervasive among the young. Please, one young guy from Malaysia, don't let me down. I won't be able to go to Japan. With give one question. Dato, I'll give you after one young guy. <laughs> I'm not going to give up this mic. You're not going to have the next session. Come on. No young guy? I'm going to go to Cherish now because I know she's young. and She's been to Silicon Valley last month. So subculture, you look at culture in Silicon Valley also. <coughs> Maureen Osukesan has speak, uh, spoken about uh, anime and manga and how that is also innovation that push services even. So Malaysia subculture. <laughs> okay. I promise you, no young guy going to go out. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... Thank you. The guard is shy, huh? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your indulgence. <coughs> Actually, I, I'm young because uh, they call me Young Arif, <laughs> Y-O-U-N-G. So, 30 seconds. I would like to share with you, I think Dr. Zaki was saying something. The, I had a very fantastic, amazing, awesome toilet experience in Zurich Airport. So, I was doing my thing, as you say, uh, Otiara, right? Eh? So, doing my thing, you know, men, eh, we kind of... We don't really f we are too fussy about the focusing our aim. No? So I was in the toilet, and I said, wow, there's a fly in the toilet. No? So guess what? <laughs> Left, right, right. <laughs> Actually, the fly was embossed on the porcelain uh, toilet, and it was fantastic design. That uh, the unintentionally, uh, by raw, natural, whatever, you would target the fly. So it was very, the most... <laughs> okay, fine, fine. We don't have a young guy. So two questions. <laughs> okay, I answer. Two questions, okay. culture of the Korean uh, innovation, yeah, all right? All right. right? Yeah. And also, I think the fly was mentioned in your TEDx, also in Japan. Okay. Kamarul, can I ask one question? You know, this I'm uh, not still young. Cannot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two questions first, then I'll go to you last. You know, Kamarul, oh. Kamarul. Kamarul, yeah. yes. Can one question? He's the boss, so I, I cannot do boss. anything. Right? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to shift from, from the toilet uh, <laughs> story. Yeah. No, um, um, I'm still young at heart, Kamarul, please. <laughs> um, anyway, um, uh, find, find your own identity is very important. I, I truly believe in that. But um, you have to uh, appreciate what you have. But currently, uh, the worry uh, among the older generation like me is that younger people tend to be swayed by uh, culture from, from the West, for example, because it's all over our media. And I, I suppose that what worry us is that they couldn't find their identity anymore. They, they, are, they, they think their identity is what the West uh, brought to them. And you're going to lose because you, you start to copy whatever that the West is doing. They do hip hop. You're gonna do hip hop, you know. So there's nothing uh, uh, from your culture that, that, that you can present. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. You know, for example, that was a good point. Uh, let's say I've seen some mixture culture of the fashion here. You know, the young ladies are wearing this uh, traditional outfit, and on top of it, they all wear the black jacket like European style. And I asked some of those girls, and I just because it's cold by the air conditioner, but it's always, you know, black tailor tailor suit like this, and I, it was so similar to the 100 years ago Japan, you know, kimono ready wearing the you know leather jacket, leather you know shoe, and at at that time it was cool, you know, I am westernized, so it was at that time of the still, you know, mentally, you know, this. Um, mental inferior complex we had. But now we don't have it anymore. So they can, their fashion designer can make it a little bit more customized. You know, this you know, Malaysian version of the jacket, on t it fits on the traditional, you know, the Malaysian style. Then it can be, you know, appealing to this all over the world. It can be the top model wearing, the top model can wear that, right? So that's the hybrid idea. So if you look at that, okay, this woman is westernized because he, she's wearing that, you know, western jacket, but you customize it. So as I mentioned, every single module is easy to, you know, available. You can get any style, 
And the combination is a point. That's a curation. And then customize little by little each module is a point. So, you know, all you the elderly people has to give them is a confidence. You know, if you look at carefully, you can customize. You just don't import it. Just customize it, and it's not you know inferior you know things at all. And also, I was asking. Thirty I, I, seconds. Okay. <coughs> Okay, the young, young boy came finally. Okay. The Korea, the, the uh, Korea, okay. Yeah. Korea case. That was the first experience of Japan. We are running like you know, crawling in the you know this red red zone war for like a, a half a century, and when we notice, uh, uh Korea is already here. So whole system was not prepared for all those poor engineers. I was one of the engineers who lost a lot of my colleagues to those companies with the you know higher salary. But the system was not prepared. That's all. As a front runner of the emerging countries, I, I'm sure this Japan was a front runner of the emerging countries, first emerging country after the European culture, right? Mm -hmm. So this, you gotta run. <laughs> okay, Korea is now suffered from the China's similar you know, idea. You know, Chinese companies are you know sucking up. <laughs> so it's same. It's not, nobody's fault. It's an inevitable life cycle. You know, neighborhood is becoming rich. Okay, of course they suck it up. So that's not possible to block it out. It's an open war. So maybe flexible system is much more powerful. But what you have to run is what happened to Japan. We don't run from the bad part of Japan. <laughs> and they run good part of Japan. For that, it's such a good benchmark on object Japan is. Japan is an aging society. No offense, Maureen Suke san But uh, the all money from the Middle East has already... <coughs> here, right in France, so I don't want to, you know, disturb that anymore. I'm just going to steal one minute. This is Shazani, 25-year-old, young, Gen Y, MMU, educated and trained. He has two questions. I'm not going to be democratic here. I'm going to sum up his question. One, his question to you is, manga started in the 1980s, you know, mm. and uh, he said, even if we promote our subculture now, we're going to be way behind, 30 years. You, Japanese manga, anime, subculture have 30 years lead. Yeah, yeah. And secondly? And secondly, um, um, if you are a Malaysian, there's this unique thing about Malaysian is that if Malaysian goes to Japan, suddenly they talk like Japanese people. And if we go to <laughs> the Arab countries, suddenly we, we talk like Arabs. Sabah lahir. Doctor, the number one person of him, he's your antithesis because he's saying it doesn't matter. The moderateness of Malaysian, we go anywhere, we can adapt. We are like USB, mm. universal. Mm. For him. Thank you, Shazani. Thank you. Last two questions. Well, the, uh, one big hint I give you is, uh, you know, when they are making the new original, any icon like, a, you know, this character or the manga, you know, the heroes, the, the trap they always go into is that they want to, they have too much, you know, the energy, so they want to make it into the cool, cool person. He is a representative of Malaysia. He has to behave cool. He's a nice guy and a justice guy. That's wrong. <laughs> you know, make fun of Malaysia. If you can have, afford to see Malaysia from outside, that is necessary. It's a global time. So make fun of Malaysia yourself. Then everybody loves you. You know, just like, you know, Korean, you know, this uh, Kannam style was so big hit. That was make kind of fun of Korean himself. But the big mistake was they thought that was, uh, you know, one hook to branding the Korea too big as a nice, cool culture. That was wrong. <laughs> That's my uh, private idea. Make, if you can afford uh, confident yourself, you can laugh at yourself. So, Make fun of Jap you know, this uh, Malaysian culture by yourself. Okay. D I didn't say that, okay? Mori <laughs> Nusuke san said that. Um, so thank you so much. But uh, please stay on stage because um, there was this quiz that had been handed out. And uh, the first session quiz winners, uh, the winner will be, I'm told that the moment I say this automatically through innovation, it will appear there. Then the winner is... There you go. Ah, not just is. So, the winner kindly collect your Chromebook. If you don't want, please give to me at WIFKL Secretary Room Level 3. Just find those with the tags and they will get you there. Thank you so Thank much, Marino Sukesan.
Please, another round of applause. Mori Nusuke has his own website, and he has uh, the website um, that's, that links to his TEDx videos and all. A lot of the things that he's discussed here are also online. Please, do go there.